hello guys welcome to my youtube channel and thanks for coming back again if you're already a subscriber to this channel and if you're yet to subscribe you can click on the subscribe button and also make sure you click on the bell of notification to notify you when we drop a new video thank you let's move on we want to talk about the wife 2023 business practical electricity and we have seen so many set up of those materials that we are meant to provide for the experiment and we have seen a lot of uh, uh, arrangements of the circuits and all that so but we need to understand some basics in this electricity practical on generally electricity so let's take into consideration some things that are meant to be in these circuits we have hamita a this is meant to measure current is meant to measure electric current. Mind you, we have voltmeter. This is meant to measure potential difference. It's meant to measure the value of potential difference. That is the function of the voltmeter in that experiment. However, we have a real start, which is a, a form of resistor, a resistor rather, that offers resistance to current. Then we have another standard value of resistor connected here of which it is meant to be unknown and of which the value is going to be determined then we have the uh, meter bridge the meter bridge is also made with a constant wire that has its own value of resistance so which means it will also offer resistance to the flow of current now we need to understand the concept of what is called current current is the effect of movement of a charged body. When a body is charged negatively or positively, if such body is set into motion by a certain force called electromotive force, then such body will create an effect. And the effect of this movement is what we regard to as electricity. However, when current flows, there is a uh, a, a, a friction along the way through the wire or through whatever the current is going to pass through there must be a friction that will enable that we enable it to move of which we know that friction is a force that opposes motion so which means if these charged particles are to pass through a conductor there must be something that will serve as a, a force that will oppose their motion that is in form of frictional force that we do talk about in mechanics so it also takes place in electricity and this frictional force is what we call the resistance. So resistance is the opposition given to the flow of current and which enables it to move. In a nutshell, each wires or conductors connected to the cell will have its own resistance. And then you can connect that resistor along the circuit to offer more resistance to the current. In a nutshell, let's move on. Now, if resistance is one of is, is, is a factor that reduces uh, efficiency of the motion of, of electric current of charged bodies, then if we are going to make a charged body move and create an effect called electricity, then work has to be done. We need to push it with a certain force. Now, the amount of work done to push that current is what potential difference is all about how much work is done to push the current so to work against resistance so that is potential difference the work done in moving that charged body from a particular point which is from the source of the current to the destination and back to the source of the current so that is potential difference so in a nutshell let us look at how this circuit works in this experiment we are expecting because we have a lot of resistors connected, then we would be expecting that the current should be very, very low or should have a low reading while the potential difference is of high reading. Now, let's take a look at this diagram as a point of reference. This is a cell. It supplies a current which flows in this direction from the positive terminal of the cell. So if this flows, Suppose an ammeter is connected at this point, it will read a current of a certain value, higher value. But no, we are connecting the ammeter before the cell. 
So current will eventually pass through all these before getting to it to measure it actually directly, but that is in a very uh, milliseconds. So now the current we have to pass through the real start, and the real start will offer a given amount of resistance to the current. Now, when it gets here, the current splits again, and then a certain current passes through the potential difference, the, the voltmeter to read the potential difference anyway. The potential difference across the circuit will be recorded because this, poten this voltmeter is connected in parallel to the resistor. The reason why it is parallel to the resistor is because this different current will flow through them definitely. So and then the current will also get to the meter bridge here, of which the jockey will be used to make contact with the meter bridge for the com complete circuit to be made. If the circuit, if the jockey is used to make contact with a certain length on the meter bridge, that is a complete circuit. So the current that flows here and the one that flows here. And the ones that pass through the jockey will all come together here and be recorded on the ammeter. So with this, we can see that a lot of resistance has been offered to that current. And that is an opposition. So to push the current, we would need more of work to be done. And that is why the potential difference will be high. While the uh, ammeter will read a low current. It will read a low current, and despite that fact, there will be a high value of potential difference because there is a lot of resistors connected, and there is more work done. Even despite that fact, we still have lower value of current corresponding to that of voltmeter. Okay, according to Ohm's law, we said voltage is proportional to current. It's directly proportional to current. The potential difference is directly proportional to what? current of which we get the value of R to be the constant that is high R, good. For the fact that they are directly proportional, that doesn't mean that uh, they will be equal in measurements, no, and that doesn't mean that uh, one, one cannot increase while the other decrease depending on the experiment. So the circuits have to be arranged in such a way that we give a suitable value. So now, in this case of the experiment, now you can see that we are going to look for the value of R. So the value of R should be V over I, normally according to Ohm's law, V over I. But now that according to the experiment, the potential difference is now inversely proportional to the current because as it increases, what happens to the what? Current, it decreases. So well, in order to get our resistance, we still have to put resistance here. R over I. So in order to get this, we can still make this inverse. If I make find the inverse of my potential difference here, and I have the inverse of my okay, let's make this is going to be high inverse with R. So this is V inverse, this is high inverse. If we want to look at it in a very good way, okay. Uh, taking the inverse of V and the inverse of, okay, by taking the inverse of V here, let's take the inverse of both sides, we are going to have what is called high over half. So, the graph of anyone could be plot over anyone because if I make R the subject of the formula here, I can still have R equals uh, I over V inverse. So, I might actually, the graph might ask, actually ask you to plus the value of current against V inverse, definitely you still get your heart. You still get your heart. It's just a matter of making, okay, um, it's still just the same thing if I have R equals V over I. If I take the inverse of both sides, I will have R inverse is equals to um, uh, I over V. So in a nutshell, I can take this to be what? High V inverse. So I, if I'm plotting high against V, this is what I will have. But in a nutshell, if I want to plot high inverse, if I take the inverse of both sides, that will be V over high. So I can actually plot a graph of, you know, here now I'll be having high, which is definitely going to be what? V over high. 
So, but in the case where I'm looking for a high inverse, it will still give me the same thing as this. So, if I want to plot high V against, or let's say high inverse against V on the graph, it's still the same thing. It is still V over high. So, I may be told to plot the graph of I inverse against V or probably V inverse against high. So, I still have my values. The values of the slope will still represent the resistance, the, no, the uh, value of the resistance, which is unknown. Actually, we know we are going to set the real start to a, real start to a fixed resistance, and then this wire we have its own fixed resistance of which we can just be using the jockey to measure each length. Anyway, so after doing that, we achieve different value of I and different value of V, of which we are going to plot against each other in this manner. And we get the value of R. So that is all I have about the experiment. I wish you success in the examination. And if you're a teacher, you need to know all these um, rules that is pertaining to this experiment. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you share this channel to those who need them. Thank you. Thank you.